please excuse any mispronunciations in this story. I mean no disrespect. The story is about Kristen Deborah Modaberry, who vanished from San Francisco, California on June 23, 1997. She was 18 years old at the time and should be 44 years old now. Kristen was born in Danbury, Connecticut to Debbie, a teacher, and Bob, an electrical engineer. She was raised in Charlotte, North Carolina. In 1997, having just completed her freshman year at North Carolina State University on a park scholarship, she traveled alone to the San Francisco Bay Area for the summer to study photography at the University of California, Berkeley. She used Craigslist to find a room in a house on Jane Avenue in Oakland where she had four male roommates. She found part-time employment at the San Francisco Museum of Modern Art and a full-time job at Spinelli's Coffee Shop in the Crocker Galleria Mall in San Francisco's Financial District. Kristen was last seen at the Crocker Galleria Mall in San Francisco's Financial District. She had concluded her shift at Spinelli's at around 3 p.m. She had indicated to co-workers that she considered visiting Baker Beach that afternoon to potentially attend a party. At around 45 minutes after she her shift had ended, co-workers from Spinelli's saw Kristen in an, with an unidentified blonde woman on the second floor of the Galleria. Witnesses said that she was holding a green Jansport backpack like Kristen's. The woman has never been identified and she has yet to step forward. Kristen's family believes that the unknown female and Kristen had plans to meet at the Galleria and may have departed together. The manager of Spinelli's, however, told authorities that Kristen left the building by herself. Video surveillance last caught Kristen walking, withdrawing cash from a Wells Fargo ATM. Kristen failed to attend the first day of her photography class at UC Berkeley on June 24th, a course for which she had already paid $925 in tuition. Additionally, she left a $400 paycheck at Spinelli's unclaimed. Her roommates noted that she did not return home on the night of June 23rd, but they did not report her as missing. Several days later, after her father left a voicemail on the house's landline, one of her roommates returned his call and informed him nobody at the house had seen her for three days. Kristen's parents flew to San Francisco on Friday, June 27th, and reported their daughter missing to the Oakland Police Department. Law enforcement, however, initially considered Kristen a runaway, did not begin investigating the disappearance until Monday, June 30th. A $50,000 reward was set for any information leading to her return, and a private investigator was hired by the family. Investigator Tim Hames made this statement. We have no victim. We have no witness. We don't have anything. She left us nothing to go on. I've looked at her bank records, social security number, there's nothing to indicate that she's alive or dead. Authorities utilized bloodhounds in the ensuing search for Kristen. The dogs tracked her scent to the Geary Street number 38 bus from the stop outside the Crocker Galleria. The bus travels across San Francisco to the Sutro Park Beach area near Lands End Beach. Her scent was also traced at Sutro Park Beach but the dogs lost the trail at the shoreline. No other evidence was located at either scene. Kristen's family found a Bay Guardian newspaper stuffed in a trash can in Kristen's room with a personal ad circled which read, Friends, females seeking friends to share activities who enjoy music, photography, working out, walks, coffee, or simply the beach, exploring the Bay Area. Interested, call me. It is unknown if Kristen placed the advertisement herself or if she answered it. All records from June 1997 have, been, have since been de destroyed at the newspaper's office. It is also unclear if the advertisement is related to her disappearance. An anonymous caller contacted KGO-TV, the ABC affiliate in San Francisco on July 10, 1997. He claimed that Kristen was murdered by two women and her body disposed of under a wooden bridge near Point Rise. The women in question told authorities that they believed the phone caller was John Onuma, 
the females had apparently her been harassed by John due to work-related problems they encountered with his girlfriend at the time, Jill Lampo. The women were preparing to fire Jill from her position when John allegedly began harassing them. Law enforcement officials questioned him about the incident and he admitted to making the phone call to KGO TV to cause problems for the women. A female witness came forward and stated that John allegedly abused her and threatened to kill her after Kristen disappeared. The witness said that during the encounter, John told her, now you know what happened to Kristen Modafferi. Mod Sorry about that. Three other women stated that they had incidents involving John and Jill as well. Jill allegedly alerted the victims to John and were subsequently abused by him. Authorities searched John's residence and discovered Jill's journal, which was missing pages from the time Kristen vanished. It is not known if either John or Jill are connected to Kristen's case, and no one has been charged with involvement in her disappearance due to lack of evidence. John denied having ever met Kristen. Searches of John's apartment revealed sizable amounts of blood, though it was later determined by DNA testing to be that of a cat. John relocated to his native Hawaii in 1999. Investigators looked into the possibility that Robert Durst was involved in Kristen's case. Robert's first wife, Kathleen Durst, disappeared from New York in 1982. Her case remains unsolved, and Robert is considered the prime suspect, although he has never been charged in connection with her case. Robert was charged with the 2001 Texas homicide of Morris Black. He claimed he murdered Morris in self-defense and was acquitted in 2003. In 2015, he was charged with murder in the 2000 shooting death of Susan Berman. Authorities don't believe Durst was involved in Kristen's case, but he's still being considered. In the 1997 disappearance of Karen Mitchell from Eureka, California, and the 1971 disappearance of Lynn Schultz from Middlebury, Vermont. Robert and Kathleen owned a health food store in Middlebury in 1971, and Lynn visited it the day she went missing. In 2015, an independent search of the house Kristen had been living in when she disappeared was completed. During the search, a cadaver dog with a world-class reputation alerted to the presence of human remains in the basement. Paul Dosti, a former Mammoth Lakes police sergeant, and owner of the dog suggested that Oakland police excavate a concrete slab in the basement and proposed that Kristen's roommates at the time be re-interviewed by law enforcement. Dr. Arpad Voss, a forensic anthropologist from the University of Tennessee, visited the house in February 2017 and scanned the area with a proprietary device he developed which detects human decomposition chemicals. The device pinpointed between 274 Jane Avenue and the house next door, 278 Jane Avenue. Paul stated that the results of these searches likely indicated a crime scene rather than a burial. Aside from the concrete slab, the home's basement floor consists of hard packed clay which would be difficult to dig with a standard shovel. Additionally, a chemical signature denoting the presence of human blood was discovered near a concrete slab at the base of porch steps at the 278 Jane Avenue residence. According to Paul and Voss, DNA testing revealed that the decomposing material matched that of Bob and Debbie, which were her parents, who had provided samples for testing. In response to the findings, Paul and Voss, the Oakland Police's Public Information Officer Felicia Asthorpe stated that their findings needed to be confirmed by the city police and claimed the information had yet to be delivered to the police department. At this time, the information we need from Dr. Voss to collect samples for his human decomposition testing has not been forwarded to the department. Additionally, no information regarding the more recent blood testing conducted on the porch has been disclosed to the department. Paul and Voss denied this to be the case, stating 
that the Oakland Police Department had enough data to undertake their own tests. Foss stated all OPD needs to do is bring their own dogs out to the site and see what happens. Foss wrote in an email, I am quite sure that Paul has told OPD how to look for human-specific VOCs and collected soil samples. All you need is a GCMS, which every university or crime lab in the world has. The procedure is very straightforward. Kristen's law was introduced by, Republic, or by Representative Sue Merrick in 1999 and signed into law by Bill Clinton in 2000. Because Kristen was 18 at the time of her disappearance, the lack of resources available for searching for her were noted, and as such, since taking effect in 2001, Kristen's law provided assistance to law enforcement and families in missing persons cases of those over the age of 17 and authorized $1 million per year to support organizations, including the National Center for Missing Adults. The center's federal funding ran out in 2005 when Kristen's law expired. It has continued with volunteer efforts. I would like to believe that she's survived for the past 26 years, and I hope someday she will be found safe. If anybody has any possible leads in this, in this case, please check out the contact information in the description. Thank you.